Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. We're going to talk about what kind of injuries are going to be difficult to deal with in getting you back to your vehicle, to base camp, or wherever you're heading back to. So some of the most debilitating injuries are the feet, can't walk, and your knees. We're going to be talking today knee injuries in the outdoors. What kind of knee injuries can occur and how do you treat those to help you get back to your base camp or to your vehicle and cause less injury. These are really common and so here we go. So if I don't care if you're doing an automotive repair or whatever the bottom line is you need to know the construction of that machine that engine to some degree. We need to talk a little bit about the anatomy of your knee before we talk about the injuries. I'm going to run through this pretty quick, but I want you to have some type of framework so you can make a reference in your head what goes wrong. So this is the tibia. This is your kneecap, which is encased in this tendon. This tendon comes up and makes your quadriceps muscle, your right over your thigh, comes down the tendon and search down, this is called the tibial tuberosity. And this is your tibia and your uh, fibula out here on the outside. This is the outside of your leg. So femur, tibia, fibula. This is the patellar tendon. This over here is your lateral collateral ligament. This is your medial collateral ligament, your MCL. Inside here, these are your meniscus. You have two, one on each side. They look like a bagel. That is the infamous ACL, anterior cruciate ligament. You heard about that in football and basketball players rupturing that. Back here you have your PCL, your posterior cruciate ligament. These are condyles on your femur. And then you have bursas, which are fluid-filled sacs. You have one over the patella, one up in here, one down below. So that is the basic anatomy, and we're going to come back to this with certain injuries. <clears throat> one of the injuries that occurs is a bursitis, a pre-patellar bursitis. And you're going to get that if you're on a hard surface on your knees for, let's say you're collecting firewood. Uh, you're around the fire pit. You're doing some work on your tent or your shelter, and you're on your knees quite a bit on a hard surface. You don't have any padding. This bursa will get inflamed, and it's the stereotypical water on the knee scenario where this gets fluid filled. So that is a typical bursitis. That takes a few days to develop, but the next day you may have some pain and it's going to be painful to walk. So that is a situation where you should be able to get back, no problem, ibuprofen, ice, just go to your next closest oak tree, tear down the bark, open it up, you got your ice, your milk, you don't have ice in the outdoors. So you're going to have to do cool water compresses if you have a creek next door, something like that. You're going to have to be somewhat innovative. <clears throat> so that is bursitis, and those are the ones that you usually see where a person comes in and will drain that, we'll put a needle in here, and we'll drain that fluid. So that's what that is. Next we have tendonitis. You get tendonitis anywhere. You get tendonitis in your elbows. You've heard of uh, elbow uh, epicondylitis, that is tendonitis. You have tennis elbow, you have golfer's elbow, that depends on what side of the elbow is inflamed. So tendonitis is inflammation of any tendon. So this tendon down in here, patellar tendon, gets inflamed with overuse, uh, not working out, not having your legs strong enough, uh, and you get this tendonitis. And that can be pretty painful, and this also is not going to debilitate you enough to get back to base camp. So pretty minor can be painful, annoying, aggravating as hell. You, again, 90% of all the treatments on these are going to be a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. You're not going to have ice in the outdoors, cool compresses. And we're going to show you some 
techniques that you can decrease some of the pain. You've heard of tennis elbow straps that you put on your forearm. You can also do that with a pre or a tendonitis of the knee. Then you have tendinosis. Tendinosis is different than tendonitis in that it's not more of an acute injury, it's a chronic injury. And usually the only way you diagnose that is with an ultrasound or an MRI and it's chronic changes over time of the tendon. And usually ibuprofen, pretty well worthless with that. It's not gonna help. Sometimes injections help um, and physical therapy. And that's more of a chronic issue. But I had to mention it because I get asked all the time, what's the difference between tendonitis and tendinosis? So this next injury is, your, let's say you're hiking and you know, there could be a rock in front of you or you see a sudden movement and there's wildlife or your buddy asks you a question and quickly you stop and you twist. So a stop and twisting motion of your knee is how you're going to tear a meniscus. And that's in here, these two little, I call them bagels down in here. You have your lateral meniscus and your medial meniscus. And there's a variety of different kinds of tears, which for this video, it's not important to know. You need to know that that's how that injury usually occurs, is a twisting motion. And there's other ways it can tear, but that is the most common. And those can be painful. You'll get swelling, usually pain behind the knee. And if you look behind the knee, a lot of times in these situations, you have this hollow area in here and fluid and blood will fill up back in here and that's why you're going to have pain behind the knee most of the time is putting pressure so on a meniscal tear again tylenol non-steroidal anti-inflammatories uh, ibuprofen aleve take those with food and you're going to immobilize this knee because it's going to be painful as hell to walk especially going up and down stairs when you put pressure down on the knee you're putting pressure down on those menisci and it hurts. So we're at the end of this video, we're going to talk about what can you do in the outdoors in terms of creative treatment and creative immobilization. Because you're not going to have the stuff you have, you know, you have in a clinic. So we're going to talk about that at the end of this video. So one of the most common injuries, and as far as common, I'm not really sure how common it is, but it's common in probably everyone's mind because if you ever watch ESPN and the Sports Channel, it's a common injury on the basketball court, it's a common injury on the gridiron, and that is an ACL tear. And, and a PCL tear too, the posterior ligament that I talked about. This one back in here, and the ACL, which is right in here. And you'll see a guy on the basketball court, and he's driving, driving all the way down to the other end, and he immediately stops, and his upper torso he keeps going and he tears that ACL now there's three grades of that you can strain it you can have minor tears or a complete tear you have a complete tear you have some laxity here in your knee it swells hurts like hell and it's important if you're out in miles from nowhere to immobilize this the best you can and get back how this occurs in the outdoors any, like this hill right here behind me, if you look, I mean, that's probably about, probably about a 30 degree grade, maybe 40. You're going down a hill, you're climbing in the Tetons or you're climbing at Glacier Park and you're, and you're going down the hill and you have 40 pounds on your back with a backpack. And when you're going down that upper body torso and you stop quickly, that's how you can tear your ACL, or at least strain your ACL tendon, or ligament, I should say. So that is one of the most common ways that can occur. When you go down a hill and you have weight on your back, really important to kind of keep your legs apart from, even with your shoulders, bend your knees about 10 degrees and, and head down the hill like that and make sure your partner doesn't take a video of you and stick it on YouTube because you're gonna look like a dork. But nevertheless, this definitely helps a lot. And you're gonna 
basically plod down that slope, you're not going to be running down it. Now, if you're young and healthy and you got good quads and you're in good shape and your lower extremities are strong, you shouldn't have a problem. But if you, you know, as most 20 year olds do, you're heading down there and you're going to be risky and you're going to run down that trail as fast as you can, you can incur an ACL tear. A PCL tear, that's really fairly uncommon. One of the most common ways that's injured or torn, if you're in the car and you get in a car accident and you have a direct force on your, so your knee is bent in the car, you're sitting down in a sitting position and the dashboard hits your tibia, that's how you can tear your PCL. So if you're hiking and you fall and there is a log and this part of your leg hits that log, you could tear your PCL that way. So those are ACL and PCL tears. And again, we'll talk about the treatment at the end. The last one I'm going to address in detail uh, is the dislocated patella. Now there's kind of two types of this. There's a dislocated kneecap and there's a subluxation of the kneecap that many people, when they sublux their kneecap, they go, oh, I dislocated my patella. So there's two different. So a dislocated patella usually is a direct force on the knee falling down and this then dislocates laterally, which means outward of your leg and gets stuck there. Sometimes you, you always should x-ray these because sometimes you can have a chip of this condyle. That's not uncommon when this slides across here. So these can be reduced. It, this is a very, very painful injury. And a lot of times what happens, this just pops right back in. It's not a big deal. But if it stays there, then it's painful, clearly. And we'll talk about how we're going to get that back in place when, we, at the end of this video, we're going to talk about immobilization and how we're going to reduce that. Now, a subluxation is basically you have a direct force to the patella, it subluxes off and pops right back in. And you feel it, and you go, oh my god, I dislocated my patella. Well, I guess technically, briefly you did, but a full dislocation, it goes out laterally, and sometimes it gets stuck there. I've had a couple Back in the day, I coached basketball with some young girls, and I had a couple people where they dislocated their patella, and we got it back in. And um, so and the, the treatment is ibuprofen. And sometimes these can dislocate again down the road. Uh, more common in women than men. Uh, if you have the proverbial knock knee individuals where their knees go in just a little bit, that's more common with those individuals. This muscle out here is called the vastus muscle. If that is lax and it's not really strong, that muscle can, that weakness of that muscle can add in this dislocating uh, easier. So you fall on the trail, you're in the outdoors, and you dislocate your patella, what are you gonna do? Stay tuned. You're walking down the trail, you fall, you have a direct trauma to your knee and you have dislocated your kneecap, your patella, and it dislocates this way laterally, and it's stuck and it doesn't go back in. So what do you do? Now, if you were at the clinic and you had this, I could give you medication, I could have you relaxed, I can decrease your pain, and I'm going to put this back in, and it doesn't take that long at all. However, this is gonna be a time, if you're miles out, and you can't get this back in. Usually these pop in within a few minutes on their own. But if you're in the outdoors and it does not go back in, you can put it back in with really minimal, minimal risk of any damage. I suggest you go ahead and give the individual or yourself some Benadryl, um, ibuprofen, Tylenol, same time. Wait till that kicks in and hopefully it goes back in on its own. If it doesn't, you're going to, their leg is going to be most likely in a kind of a flex position like this. You're gonna put pressure on the outside of their kneecap, push pretty hard, and you're gonna have them extend their leg and it will pop back in. A lot of pressure on the kneecap, extend their leg and it will pop back in. 
So yes, it's gonna be painful, but when it goes back in, they have immediate relief. It still will ache, but you'll be able to get them out of the woods, get them back to base camp or back to your vehicle. So that is the reduction of a dislocated patella. So for tendonitis, if you have tendonitis like a golfer's or tennis elbow, we use a tennis elbow strap. What that does is takes the pressure and tension off of the tendon, allows it to heal over time. And you can basically do that if you have a tendonitis, an inflammation of this tendon. They make elastic straps that you can take, get them at Walmart or any kind of pharmacy store, CVS, Walgreens, and you can take it and Velcro it down and tighten it, and that relieves um, a lot of the tension off of that tendon. So you can use those, and those are very helpful. You can also take some duct tape and use that to as a and you can put that around to leave the pressure and tape it tight to take the pressure off of that tendon we're going to do another video in a few weeks where we're going to talk about athletic tape and you're going to put that directly on your skin so those are for individuals that have a history of strains, tendonitis, recurrent tendonitis, uh, recurrent injuries, and how you can put the tape and how you would do that to support your knee if you're hiking, uh, going up and down hilly terrain. So we'll be addressing that, and that is a separate video. Now, if you have a meniscal tear, an ACL tear, any of those, a dislocated patella, one of the things you want to do, you want to have in your, and I'm sure you're going to have it in your backpack, hopefully an extra pair of socks. If you don't, you know, you see how comfortable you are, you know, take off your sock, you're going to roll it up, make it into a ball, and you're going to use that and put that behind your knee to fill in that spot. That is called the popliteal fossa right back there. So take that sock, throw it behind your knee, and you can tape that sock back there. That's gonna prevent your knee from fully flexing. And anything you can be creative in your pack to ball up and stick back there would be helpful and tape it. If you have a dislocated patella, I've cut up a t-shirt here. You're gonna take that t-shirt, you're gonna wrap that around your knee for support build that up around your patella like that and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape duct tape and you're going to tape that all the way around on both sides and then what I usually do is I'll run one running out of black. I'm going to save that. Get some nice bright yellow here. You're going to come over here to the outside. That's the lateral aspect. Run that this way all the way up your thigh to here and you're going to do that on the other side. Medial. Bring it up just under. They're going to cross just under your patella. You're going to run that up like that. That with the sock behind your knee or the balls you're going to protect back there, that is going to really help a lot because you're not going to have a hinged knee brace in the outdoors. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take, you can take sticks, you can take your trekking poles if you have them, you can put them on either side and you're going to run that duct tape on either side and have those on both sides of your leg from here to here and this knee is going to be in about 30 40 degrees flexion just like that and you're going to hopefully crutch this person out and help them if you're by yourself you're going to have to get a cane and get yourself out but this is going to decrease your pain and decrease further injury um, so that's really important 
So these are some basic, very basic taping methods that you can do. Uh, and you should always have your duct tape and you're going to have a shirt or something that you're going to have if you've dislocated your patella and something to stick under your knee that would be really, really helpful. Tylenol, ibuprofen, cool compresses, and then get into a urgent care or ER. That was basically an overview of knee injuries in the outdoors on the trail. Um, just an overview. I didn't address things like ilial tibial band syndrome or patellofemoral pain joint syndrome. I didn't mention those. Pretty obscure. Um, so if you have any questions, throw them down below. You have some additions, add them in there. That would be great. Would love to hear from you. So if you like the video, thumbs up. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. Take care, guys.